You don't know what tomorrow will bring, do you? Let me tell you about, let me tell you about Tom. Me and Carl knocked on Tom's door. A Catholic man grew up Catholic since he was that big. And Tom, I think he was, I think he was under the influence a little bit. I could smell a little, little alcohol on him. But Tom was very open. You need to pray for Tom. Very open to receive the gospel. And I tried my best to break through that religious bondage that bound him. You know what I asked him? You know what he, he, he told me and Carl? He told me and Carl. And you, Carl impressed upon him that, you know, you don't have tomorrow. The best time to get saved is right now. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. You have no idea. But he said that he goes in there and he prays all the time and he prays and he prays and he's been praying all his life and he prays and he prays and he kneels down in front of the crucifix and he prays and he prays and he prays and he prays. And, he prays. and I said, have you ever prayed and asked Jesus to save your eternal soul from hell? He said, I never prayed that one. And that's strange. He's been praying all his life, but he's never prayed and received the free gift of eternal life and came to Christ and called upon his name for salvation. That's the danger of religion. Yes, sir. The bondage, keep them bound. Yep. You see, they're praying to get their way to heaven. Yep. That their prayers will somehow open a door when they die to get them to heaven. Yep. Praying going to get you to heaven. It's putting your faith and trust in what Christ has already done, the gospel, and coming to him as a lost man. I told you a few weeks ago, I'm going to try my best to get as many people lost as I can possibly get. I'm, do, I'm trying, ain't I? And we're, we're both trying. We're trying to get them lost. I want to see some folks that will admit I'm lost. Amen. I asked Tom, when, when did you ever know you were lost? When did you ever real? It's like he doesn't even know. You know why? Because they baptize them as a baby. They think they're saved since day one. That's right. That's right. See, bondage. They're bound to it. They need to be free from it. We're going to try our best to free some of these religious folks from that bondage and get them lost. That religion can't save them. And nothing can save them except the only one. It's Jesus. That was a blessing talking to Tom and that other girl too and it's been real good over in Riverside just these last few weeks. Some folks have been very receptive and open. You know, I like it when they open the door and they step out onto the porch. It doesn't happen as often as I'd like, but it's such a blessing when they do and they have questions and they're open. Amen. That girl I witnessed to, to her, the lights were coming on, man. She was getting it. She was getting lost. <laughs> she was getting lost. Yeah, I want them to get lost, and I want to, I don't want them to get lost. Yeah, we're gonna keep keep us in your prayers, please. And Tommy, that was a blessing. I wish he was here. I'd tell him. He texted us like about six o'clock. Me and Thane. He texted me and Thane and said, "I'm praying for you." See, he remembered the time. He knows when we're going out. And you folks remember we're going out on Thursday. And if any of you want to come, just come along and just tag along. You ain't got to say a word. Just pray for us. Well, when someone's witnessing, just pray for us. You ain't got to say a word. Just see what, it, what it's like being out there. It's such a blessing. It's, it's walking by faith. There's an element of faith behind every single door. We have no idea. I don't know. I've never met him before in my life. I don't know who that is. Yeah. But God will surprise you from time to time. And it's such a blessing. Amen. Just a blessing walking by faith and being out there. But if you can't come out, please, at 6.30 on Thursdays, pray for us. Mark it on your calendar. They're out there trying to win some souls and plant the seed. We need your prayers. Pray for them folks that are going to hear the Word of God and, and receive a witness that they be saved. I pray Tom gets saved. Amen. I loaded him up, gave him like three tracks. He said he'd read them. I believe he did. I believe he was very honest. So please pray for him. All right. We already prayed, right, Thane? Did you pray? We already prayed. We're all prayed up, ready to go. I really need to take my time on this, so I may not get through it all. After I finish, we're going to take the Lord's Supper there as a family, as a church family, to remember the Lord, to do this in remembrance of Him. So we'll do that right after I finish up here. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 
1 Corinthians chapter 8. Is this thing on? You all hear me back there? Nice to get some amens from the back like you can hear me, you know. <laughs> get some confirmation from back there. In the back. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. Pray for that couple that was here for Sunday school too, Michael and Michael. Did you invite them? Yeah. Yeah. So pray for them. They, they, they both need to be saved, you think? Yeah. They're lost. Wish they would have stuck around. But you know, when the, when the comforter is at work, those that don't have the Spirit of God are uncomfortable. Uh -huh. That's how it works. That's just how it works. So pray for them. Pray God would continue to use Michael and Alyssa at their work to be a witness. And other folks around Sioux City plant seeds. So please pray for them. First Corinthians chapter 8, look at verse 5. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven, spiritual, right? Or in earth, physical. You mean there's gods on earth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Man makes gods out of physical things. Doesn't man do that? Yep. They make gods out of anything. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many, oh yeah, there's many, and lords many. Verse 6, I want you to take this very personal this morning, as if you're saying this. But to us, that's me. That's you. But to us, there is but one God the Father of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Boy, I like that. You like that, Carl? I like that. We are of Him, in Him, and by Him. How in the world could I ever be lost again? <laughs> If I'm of him and in him and by him. Is that what it says? Yes, sir. You got to take that verse personal. But unto us, there is but one God. What's a God? If you, were to, if you had to define, if someone had said, what is a God? How would you define a God? There's many. You know what I said? There's many. But what is a God? Well, let me just tell you. A God is a person, place, or thing. You can make a God out of a place. You can make a God out of a person. You can make a God out of a thing. Right? It's a person, place, or thing that's exalted and worshipped or idolized. Something with power to control a man's thoughts and actions. I've got a God. And I can allow that God to control my thoughts and actions. Amen. The world has their gods, and their gods are many, and they allow. You see, you have to allow a God to control you. And the world has gods many, and they've allowed those gods to control their thoughts and their actions. There's one God that should control your thoughts and actions. And it's the one God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, I'm not confused about my God. I know who He is. So that's what a God is. And man gives that object, whatever it is, man gives that object power over them to control them. Child of God, you better be careful. You know why? Because the world's filled with many gods. And you are susceptible to allow those gods to control you. Should I pull an Earl Ankrum on you? I left my phone at home this morning on accident. See? 
Carl's got more victory over that thing than I do, but unfortunately I'm connected to that thing because of my business. I just am. And I, I'd have a flip phone. I'm telling you, man, I don't need that thing. But I got here and it's like, oh, I forgot my, do you see? That's an object. Oh my goodness, people feel naked. They'd probably rather run around naked than be without their phone. What, what's that? A God can be a person, place, or a thing that you give power to to control your thoughts and your actions. That's a God. Something worshipped and exalted and idolized other than the one true God. And there be many, both physical and spiritual, both visible and invisible. In ancient days, the Greeks, you know about the ancient Greeks? They worshipped many gods. Zeus, you know the guy with the lightning bolts? Zeus, Apollo, Poseidon, yep. Athena, yep. Atlas, Hermes, Triton, and many, 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 many more. If you were to study all the cultures that ever have been and read all the books about all the other cultures, you know what you would uncover? You would uncover a great number of gods worshipped by man. Both spiritual, like Zeus. No one's ever seen Zeus, right? But you have a whole history of a culture of millions of people that worship, sacrificed animals to these false, invisible gods. If you were to study all the cultures, you'd find you would uncover so many gods, both visible and invisible. Spiritual, invisible de deities, along with physical, visible deities, such as Caesars. They worship Caesar like he was a god. Didn't they? God on earth. The Pope. God on earth, right? Emperors. Generals, kings, careful, presidents. <laughs> a God is something you allow to control your thoughts and control your actions. And you're to have one God and one book. Yes, sir. Got it? Yep. Those are gods that man make and give power to. The gods of this world, they're not my gods. They're not a god to me unless I give them power to be a god to me. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, for the most part, where we're at today in America, and I like to speak to the present, Americans have made gods out of fallen, imperfect men, women, and children. So it's not so much invisible gods anymore, it's visible. They've made gods out of visible things, for the most part, today in America. And today's list is long of these gods that they idolize, that they've deified, that they worship their gods. And the list is wrong. You ever notice when these folks out here, they make a god out of someone and, that, that, and their god messes up? Their god can do no wrong. I mean, everything can come out about them in the news and they still worship them, they still follow them. They can do no wrong. You've made a God out of that person. When you follow them, just blindly, blind leaders of the blind end up where? They both end up in a ditch. I promise you, you won't end up a ditch if you follow the one true God. I promise you. But the list today is long, isn't it? From sports figures to actors to actresses, mus mus musicians, politicians, the gods are many. The gods are many. But there's one thing. Get this. There's one thing that all the gods of this world have in common. Though they're vastly different in features and characteristics, 
there's one thing that they all have in common. You ready? They all rise and they all fall. Every one of them. And eventually, the gods that are now, right now, present, eventually they will be replaced by the next God in line. That's how it works for every single one of them. All the gods of history, ancient days, they all had their heyday, didn't they? They, they all reached their pinnacle of popularity. And from that point, there was only one direction, and it's down. <laughs> they went like this, and they peaked. And from that peak, they begin to descend. And for the most part, the gods of history, they descended into nothingness. Would you like to try to count on one hand how many Greeks right now at 11.36 Central Time, how many Greeks are praying to Zeus? Ten? But we're talking about an entire culture that used to. An entire culture that used to worship these gods and make animal sacrifices to try to find favor with these invisible gods which were not gods at all but they gave power to these gods but where are they now let me tell you where they're at they peaked and then from that peak there's only one way and they went down into nothingness If you would listen this morning, you might get something. Amen? You know what they all are? Here's the word this morning. I got a couple different words I want to drive home. They're all has-beens. They reached their peak, and they descended into nothingness. They're has-beens. And one day soon, all the current gods, you can name them. I know you teenagers could name them. They might be some of your gods. One day soon, all the current gods, you know what will happen? They'll peak, and then they will descend. Every single one of them. Without exception. You understand? Every one of them. All the gods worshipped right now will reach their peak, and then they will fall off the face of the earth. They're all, or all will be, has-beens. Meaning, they never again will be. When you're a has-been, you never again will be. You know Michael Jordan? There is no possible way, there's no possible way that Michael Jordan will ever arise higher than he once was at the height of his career. Nope. There, it's impossible. Now he's still popular, he's still famous, right? But back in the 80s and early 90s, my goodness, how many folks in this country and around the world were talking about Michael Jordan? These young kids, a lot of them don't even know who he is anymore. Give it 80 years. He'll just be a name in a book, a statistic, a God that peaked. He's on his descent. He's on his way out. He's a has-been, and he never will be again. It's impossible. You know, back in the 20s, was anybody alive in the 20s? That was a long time ago. What? My grand, Tammy's grandma, too. When was she born? My goodness, man. That's aged. 
uh, back in the 1920s in this country, if you were to say Babe Ruth, everybody knew who Babe Ruth was. He was the talk of the country. The Solomon's, he had like all these nick, the great Bambino, right? Yeah. Babe Ruth. You know what happened? He peaked in the 20s. He was a god. Worshipped. Applauded, right? A god. There be gods many, visible and invisible. Americans like to worship visible gods. They have plenty of them. Babe Ruth peaked in the 20s, and he died at the age of 53 from cancer, the result of a life of sin and depravity. Whoa, that's living, man. 53. What a waste. What a waste. How many folks right now in America? I mean, back in the 20s, everybody's talking about Babe Ruth. He's the talk of the country. How many Americans right now are sitting down at a table conversing about Babe Ruth? 50? 20? Nobody cares. Nobody cares anymore. But you cannot, you cannot deny that that man was a god. Nobody cares anymore. In a hundred short years, nobody cares. Nobody's talking about you anymore. That's the gods of this world. There has been, and they never will be again. Here, let me give you some names. Now, the Joneses might recognize these. <laughs> Claudette Colbert. Jean Arthur. Irene Dunn. Top three actresses of the 1930s. The gods have arrived. I, ju I just gave you their names. Do you care? <laughs> When's the last time you talked about them? When's the last time anyone talked about them? Nobody cares. The current gods right now, 100 years, if the Lord tears, I hope the Lord comes back before then. Nobody cares. They'll peak. It's universal. Every single one of them. They'll peak, and then they will descend into nothingness. Now that's just how it works. None of them are what you suppose those those three women I just read you suppose that their careers are, will take off again <laughs> They're dust in a box six foot under They had their reward here didn't they Where are they at now They'll never be what they once were it's not possible That's the gods that be many the God of the Bible, he's no has-been. Oh, no. He is and always will be. He's no has-been. Actually, he was and he is and he is to come. He's no has-been. Our God's a will-be. Be still and know that I am God. Well, that ought to comfort you. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. The heathens rage. This world's going to hell, people. This world's going down. This world's sinking fast. Be still and know that I am God. I will be See, God's a will be. He's not a has been. You know why? Because he's not like any of the other gods. He's the one true God. And he will be exalted among the heathen. He said, I will be exalted in the earth. 
I will be. Can you tell me when that's happened? We're supposed to take that allegorically or literally. Was the earth a literal thing? Well, yeah. Oh, he will be. Our God's not a has been. How many verses do you want? Thus, this is what God said in Ezekiel 38 about himself. You know, God's the only one that can talk about himself and say, me, 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 me. Perfect pride. That's what God has. You can't have it. You're tainted. You're corrupted. Your pride's filthy. He can have perfect pride. He said, thus will I magnify myself. Yeah. And sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations. I will be. And they shall know that I am the Lord. That's what he said. God will never be a has-been. It's not possible. You know why? Because he's the one true God. But all the other gods, every single one of them, physical, spiritual, visible, invisible, will all one day be has-beens and never will be again. Our God's not a has-been. Jesus, he's not a has-been, is he? He's not a has-been. Can I tell you this to encourage you, child of God, if you're saved? Neither are you. And you never will be. You'll never be a has-been. Ever. Our God's like no other God's. Our Savior is like no other Savior. And Christian, child of God, God's people are like no other people. We are like no other people. You still in 1 Corinthians chapter 8? Yes. Let's read it again. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be many gods and lords, many. Now notice the three groups here. But to us, notice the three characters here in verse 6. But to us, who's that? That's us. <laughs> But to us there is but one God, the Father. Well, there's God the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, and we, and, and by whom are all things, and we by Him. You have one God, you have one Lord Jesus Christ, and we by Him. That's one complete eternal package. Yes, sir. Christian, you are not a has been, and you never will be. And your best days, I don't care how old you are. Right. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're as old as Grandma Carter, 101, or whatever she is. If you're a child of God, saved by the grace of God, your best days are not behind you. Right. Your best day is up ahead. I said day. Your best day is ahead of you. And it's one eternal day. You know, child of God, when you get to heaven and that one eternal day begins and you peak, and you peak with Jesus Christ, you stay there because you're with him and in him and by him. You're going to peak and you'll stay there. You're going to be on top. When all of this is said and done and all the gods of this world are no more, every single one of them, You'll be with him on top. Pete. You never will be a has-been. Your best day's out ahead of you. I'm trying to encourage you this morning. No matter how old you are, no matter how sick you are, no matter what you've got, no matter what's going on in your life, your best day is ahead of you. You've got something to look forward to, don't you? Amen. Because we are of Him and in Him and by Him. I'm no has-been. You know what I am? Let me tell you what I am. I'm a shall-be. I'm a will-be. I'm a shall-be and I'm a will-be. Let me read it to you. It's all throughout the Bible. Romans 8 and verse 17, And if children, then heirs. 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with Him that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'm not a has-been, I'm a shall-be. Amen? You notice where my... You notice how the Bible just continues to point you to eternity and keep you focused. You know what? You need to get your mind off of all this. The Bible has a way of just doing that, doesn't it? The Spirit of God within you just has a way of getting your mind off of all your troubles, off of all the cares, off of all the worries, and focus on one eternal day. Because you'll never be a has-been because you've got the right God. And He's the one true God and you shall be. You shall be. 1 John 3 and verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. You see it? But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as he is. I don't know about you, but I'm saved by the grace of God and I'll never be a has-been. I'm going up with Jesus and I'm a shall-be and I'll stay a shall-be and a will-be for the rest of my eternal life. Amen? Ain't that good? Jesus. He'll never be a has-been. You know, during his ministry, three and a half years, multitudes followed him. Right? They flocked to hear him preach. They traveled miles and miles and miles to find healing and comfort and hope. And at the peak of his ministry, he experienced a decline. Didn't he? Most of them, the Bible says, went away. And not long after that, they nailed him to a cruel cross where he died a cruel death. And the world looked at that and said, oh, he just a has-been now. He's washed up. Oh, no. Here's what the world must understand. The peak of his ministry was not his crowning achievement. Amen? Because he's not a has-been. Oh, he's a will-be and he's a shall-be. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. He's never, he'll never be a has-been. He's a shall-be. He's a will-be. And so am I because I'm in him and of him and by him. And he'll reign. You know how long he reigns? Well, it says in Revelation 22... And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them, them, them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. That's what the Bible says. And that's you. Reign forever and ever. Reign. Like on top. What a blessing, man. You're going to peak with Jesus, and you're just going to stay there for all eternity. Because he's, the, he's God. And our God does not descend. He reaches a peak and He stays there and you're with Him forever and ever and ever. And that's a long time. Can I tell you about two other gods? Let me tell you about two gods. We got time? We got a few, got a few minutes here. Let me tell you about two other gods that shall be. That shall be. They do have a future but they too will peak. And they too will fall just like all the other gods. And they will be no more. But they have, they are, they are a shall be. Can I tell you about one of them? This is a God that's worshipped by many today. Many on the left worship her. Countless resources are used trying to save her and preserve her and protect her. You know who she is? She's Mother Earth. And they've, set a, they've sanctified a holy day to her 
right? Earth Day. You see, the earth shall be. But like all, we're talking about the whole earth. They've made a God. Paul predicted it. They worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Paul predicted it. They'd worship the earth. Are they worshiping the earth? Are they allowing, have they given the earth power to control their thoughts? Oh my goodness, it's crazy. They're loony. They're nuts. It's their God. Listen, I do crazy things for my God. Yes, sir. I do some foolish things for my God that the world would say, what a fool, what a nut. But I've got the one true God. <laughs> My God's not going to melt with a fervent heat. My God's not going to burn up. My God's not going to peak and then descend into nothingness. But that's the earth. Mother Earth. 2 Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. It didn't just say the works. I mean, it didn't just say the earth. It said the works too. Yeah. You know, all these folks that are trying to put all their effort, maximum effort into trying to make the world a better place without God, without giving God any credit, any glory, without giving the creator any credit or any glory, all their works are going to burn into nothingness. That's the God that this earth, that they've made this earth out to be, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So we see shall be here, shall be dissolved. Contrast that with our shall be. Well, I'm going to reign with him and I shall reign with him forever. And when, you know, when this earth is gone, I will be. All, everything you see. If you're saved, you will be too. And you will be for all eternity. What about this God? The God of this world. Satan himself. The prince of the power of the air. You know, Satan has yet to reach his peak. And you look at this world and say, man, this world is just... Oh, he hasn't reached his peak yet. He has not reached his peak. See, God will draw back and Satan will gain more power. God will allow it. He'll allow it. And Satan will be cast into this earth. He hasn't reached his peak yet. But rest assured, like all the other gods, he will peak and then he will descend. Revelation 20, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed. Ooh. See, Satan's a shall be but he's going to peak. He shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camps of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night, get it, forever and ever. Compare that shall be to our shall be. You know, in a million millennium, I don't even think anybody even remember who Satan is. He's gone. He'll become a has-been. And you'll remain a shall be and a will be. Hey, where are you at this morning? Amen? 
do you have that kind of confidence? You have that confidence that you shall be and you will be? Then tell me, what in this life can't you get through? Hey, what's holding you up? What's keeping you? What's hindering you? You believe the Bible? Well, you know you've got a future. And your best day's yet to come, isn't it? You're not like most everybody else that will admit to you, my de best days are behind me, you know. And they're, my best days are behind me. And they think back and the nostalgia draws them back like, oh, I wish I could be young again. No, I don't want to be young again. You can have it, man. You can have it. My best days aren't behind me. Now, the best days for my body might be behind me. My best day's up ahead. And it's one long eternal day on top with Jesus. Amen? That's what you've got to look forward to. If you're saved, if you've been born again, Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to show you something here. This, this message here this morning ties right into communion, the Lord's Supper. It ties right in. You know how this is a memorial, right? It's a remembrance. There's no magical, there's no magic in the juice or, <laughs> or in the bread. There's no grace that that you receive, like, oh, I've received this, and now I have the grace of God. No, you see, receive the grace of God by faith. Hello. It's by faith alone. It's a picture. It illustrates the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed and the body that was broken. And we do it in remembrance. This is what Paul said to the church, right? We're the church. Yep. That's what he said to the church. We do this in remembrance. But there's something you have to, not only do we remember, you know, when, when you're talking about remembering, you're talking about something that took place in the past, right? But notice in verse 26, for, often as you, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till what? <coughs> so it's not just remembering the past. It's being reminded of the future. He's coming. Amen. You got nothing to worry about. You know, if you're saved and this body goes in the ground, oh, he's coming for you. You know why? Because you're of him and you're by him and you're through him. And you'll be with him. There's nothing you can do about it if you're saved. Amen. We... When we have communion, we have the Lord's Supper, you don't often hear preachers focus on His coming. That's part of it. That's part of it. His body was broken, and He shed His blood to give me and you a future. Can I tell you about my future? My future is not a hole in the ground. My future is not a casket. My future is not in some funeral some funeral parlor, right, man, pay 10,000 bucks to put you in the ground. What a ripoff, man. Yeah. What a scam. They get you when you're born, they get you when they die. They just stick you, right? And then the government sticks you every day in between, right? That's not my future. That's just the future of this body. Oh, I've got a future. Can I tell you, I want you to come along with me. So I like to tell lost sinners, I want you with me. I'm going. I can tell you how I know and why I know. I have a future. My future is just as bright as the future of Jesus Christ. That's how bright it is. And that's how real it is to me. And I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't real to me.